Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com, and this is going to be another part of the series that I'm working on in Harmony Essentials, and in particular, I'm going to be showing you another thing you can do with symbols. So I'm going to show you a quick thing we're going to do here. I'm going to click and play this little animation. So basically you see a hand come out, grab a little control lever and just pull it back. Now, the thing about this is I'm going to show uh, what's happening here. I've got the, I'm going to take a look at the hand peg. So literally this is one layer. So it comes out and then we do a drawing substitution and switch from the open hand to the closed hand. But if you look, the hand is actually beneath the actual control lever. So what I want to show you is how you can get this done. And typically, uh, actually, this tutorial is using some of the resources from Toon Boom's Learn site or their Learn, uh, their portal. So I've downloaded this. And actually, let me show you this. And the link is also in the description. But this is where you can get the assets from. So you can just go to this link and download the material and you can kind of play around with this. Uh, this was set up for Toon Boom Harmony Premium and I wanted to show how to do the exact same thing using Essentials. Now, the only difference is the download you'll get actually only has this first hand drawing with the uh, closed hand there. The open hand, I actually had my partner, Mr. Chris Cartledge, knock that out. And... What I want to do here is take you through step by step how to get this done. So let's go ahead and hide this peg and I'll open up the original here. All right. And you might be noticing that I've got these thumbnails showing. This is new to Harmony 15, but what I'm going to be showing you can be used in earlier versions of Harmony. Actually, this even works in Animate and Animate Pro. And of course, this works in the current version of Harmony Essentials as well as Harmony Premium. So what I want to do is I want to make sure my library is visible. And I want to come down and I'll select these two frames here. And again, if you're just downloading, you probably only have this that one closed hand frame. But you'll just drag this straight to the library, right to the symbols folder. Now it's going to call my hand, call mine hand too, because we've already done this once. So I'll click on edit, right click, edit symbol. And what we're going to do here is right click on this layer and we'll duplicate the selected layer. And I want to make sure I select the top hand here. And let's zoom in. And what I'm going to need to do is cut away the part of the hand that I don't want showing. I only want the fingers showing. So it's going to be the fingers and part of the thumb. So to do that, I'm going to grab my cutter tool. Let's zoom in here. And I'm just coming in and getting rid of, just selecting the parts I want to get rid of here. All right. So I'm going to simply press delete or backspace. Now, the reason it doesn't look like anything has happened is because we are above a duplicate of this. So to see what's going on, I'm going to come over here to the left hand side and click on the light table, which basically says focus on the layer we're on. And so you'll see everything else kind of like it's on the light table. It's like a, a sheet of paper in between those. All right. So I'm going to come down here now and take a look at what's going to happen with the thumb. Now, the funny thing about this is you have to almost almost have to grab, I don't know, a flashlight or something and look at your own hand and figure out exactly where you would do this cut. So I'm going to, I guess, come in here a little bit here and come all the way down to where the fingers are. Now I'm kind of 
dancing right on the line, mainly because I know this was drawn out uh, with the stroke tool or the pencil tool. So with all of that selected, I'll simply press delete. And I'm zooming in here and seeing that there's a couple of spaces that I lost. Now, again, because I know this was done with a pencil, I can go to select and click on that line. And if you look under tool properties, it tells you that the size of that stroke is 21.2. So I'm going to grab my pencil tool, do a little bit of cleanup work here. I think I've done this before. Yeah, 21.2 is still set up. So I'll clean up that line. This little line here. All right. Just want to make sure there's not any weird gaps where there shouldn't be. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to grab our transform tool while we're on this layer. And what we're going to do now is called nudging, as in we're going to move this, the fingers basically forward on the Z axis. I'm going to make sure the camera area here is active. And if you're not sure if it is or not, this, that little red rectangle surrounding everything, you can also just click once. Uh, not dragging anything, but click once to select these fingers. And I'm going to hold my Option key down, Alt on PC, and press the down arrow once. And the way that you can think about this is we're moving things on the Z axis, meaning moving things forward and backward. The down arrow is the one that's pointing toward you. So we're bringing the fingers toward you. So I'm going to press the button once. OK, cool. Now let's go to the second frame. Or the second frame, the second drawing here. And what I need to do is I'll go ahead and delete this because we don't want our open hand in that second frame there. We don't want it to be on our, our Z axis because this top layer is moved a little bit forward. All right, so we'll go back to the top. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'll go to the library tab and I'll click my hand symbol. I'm going to hold down my control key. I'm going to click and drag the hand symbol right down here on top of that first frame of the hand layer. This is the drawing object, but I've dragged the symbol on top of it. So I let go of the mouse and we get a paste special option. So what I want to select is paste all frames of the symbol. Go ahead and click OK. And now, if you look at this, this looks pretty decent, actually. It lined up very nicely. OK. And it's holding on to the control. Look at that second frame, and there's the hand behind the control. All right. So let's do a little bit of work so we can animate this. I'm going to select all of these frames. Simply hold on my shift key, like click one frame, hold on my shift key, click the last frame. And I'll make sure that this is pulling up drawing two, which is the open hand. And the next thing we'll do is we're going to set up pegs for the controls as well as the hand. So selecting both of those layers, I'm going to come up here and click on Add Peg. OK. Let's go ahead and collapse these. And what I want to do with the peg here is set up where the pivot point would be. So click on our Advanced Animate tool, the Rotate tool. And I'll make the peg right there at the wrist. And for the controls, I'll make this right down at the base. OK. And one last thing, I'm going to click down here at the base. I want to add one more uh, peg here. Let's click and add a peg. Let's drag this up top. And let's place 
our controls in our hand inside this peg. So the master peg, this pivot, of course, would be down at the base. Okie dokie. So we've got our symbol made and we've also set up our pegs and pivot points. What I want to do from this point is go ahead and get ready to animate some things. So one, I'm going to turn on my animate button, grab my transform tool, and I'm going to insert a keyframe at the very beginning, F6. I'm going to set another keyframe at about frame 10, F6. And what I want to do here is I'm going to grab the keyframe on frame one. I'm going to come up here and just click on the hand. Now, one of the things I'm making sure that I'm doing, hopefully, let's see, under tool properties, when you're working in Harmony Essentials, in order to click on the peg and not the drawing, you want to be in the peg selection mode. So it's this little icon here. All right. So I'm going to click frame one. Let's drag the hand a little bit off here. And I think I'm going to have the, the hand kind of rotate up. So I'm going to, fingers are pointing down, and I've just even moved it down a little bit. So... Not too bad. And once it gets here at frame 10, let's see, I'm going to expand our pegs down here. What I want to do is select the drawing layer of the hand because I want to change the drawing substitution. So we actually have the hand open right now. And if I press my bracket key, it's going to be the open bracket key. It changes that little animation there, or basically changes the drawing. All right, not too bad. All right, now what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and close this peg for a moment, is I'm going to set up a couple of keys and then I'm going to spread those out. The first key, we're going to do a little anticipation. So the hand is going to move forward a bit and I'm going to turn on my onion skin. All right. So I want that moved forward a little bit. Let's click on the next frame and I'm going to drag the hand. I'm going to do a overshoot a little bit. So the, little lever is going to be coming backward more than it needs to. And on the next frame, I'm going to move the lever back up. So basically, we are going forward for a little bit of anticipation. Then we're going to do an overshoot. Then we're going to do a settle. So to stretch these out, I'm going to click and drag the side a little bit. So just about four frames or so. So it moves forward a little bit before it pulls back. And I'm going to drag the other one back a little bit further. So it's actually got some distance to travel here. And for the settle, Again, just using two or three frames there. So now if we play this, not too bad. All right, and last but not least, I can kind of come in here and let's say maybe for uh, this little frame here where we're going to be doing our main animation, we'll click here and I'm going to change the easing. So have that kind of slow at first and then it's going to speed up. So if we play this, if 
All right. Looks pretty good. So basically, we took our drawings and dragged it over to our symbols folder. And inside of that symbol, we duplicated our layers. Uh, we turned on our light table so we could actually see what was happening beneath the other layer. Just a little bit frosted back. And then we used our transform tool. And with our keyboard, we were able to nudge things forward on the Z axis. So if you're using Harmony Essentials, this is how you could do some of the same things that you're able to do on Harmony Premium because Harmony Premium does have those art layers like underlay, overlay, line art, and color art to play around with. You can do kind of the same thing working with symbols. So hopefully this has helped you. If it has, go ahead and leave comments. Be sure to like, share the word, and tell other people about what we're doing here at Tony Teach. We are in the process of releasing a production series, an actual production course, and how you can do uh, regular quality animation or TV quality animation, even using Harmony Essentials. So keep an eye out. If you haven't already, subscribe. And remember, make art, not excuses. So go do something. Have a good one.